Hello! Today I'll show you how to create a frosty pattern on the raised parts of a jar in Octane Render. Let's start by creating a material. I'm choosing the universal. Double click on the material icon and configure it to look like transparent glass. Set the albedo color to black, the transmission type to specular, and the transmission color to white. Now, let's apply this material to our jar. To create the frosty effect on the jar, we'll need a texture map. Let's download one from Megascans. I like this one. I've already downloaded the map, and here's how it looks. To ensure the map displays correctly on the object, don't forget to create UV mapping. Here's how mine looks. Let's get to making the frost. Switch to the node system and load the texture map using the image texture node. Initially, it might seem logical to plug the map into the roughness channel, but the result won't look realistic. Neistead, I'll use a curvature node. Additionally, we'll need a mixed material node and an RGB spectrum node. Connect the pattern map to texture 2 of the mixed material, the RGB spectrum node to texture 1, and the curvature node to the mask input. In the RGB spectrum node, change the color to black and plug the mixed material into the bump channel. Looking good already. Let's soften the map slightly so the pattern extrusion appears smoother. In Photoshop, apply a Gaussian blur with a radius of about 1 minus 2 pixels. Save the blurred map. Now, I'll duplicate this setup for the bump channel. Load the edited map and connect it to the bump input. Not bad, but the pattern lacks the frosty whiteness, it still looks more like patterned glass. Here's what we can do. Connect the unblurred map setup to the roughness channel. This will add some matte finish to the surface, which works great if you're going for a frosted glass look. But if you want that crisp frosty effect, connect the map to the albedo channel instead. Let me show you what this does. Disconnect the bump so it's easier to see. Notice how the glossiness remains around the pattern, while the white matte tint only appears on the frosty design. Let's reconnect the bump and talk about the curvature node. Essentially, it's similar to the dirt node, which could also be used here but I prefer curvature. This node interacts with the object's geometry, making the material visible in the concave or convex areas. Let's adjust it. Use the radius parameter to control the effect spread. Setting it to zero will hide the pattern entirely. The larger the radius, the more surface area the pattern will cover. Adjusting the strength parameter influences the effect's intensity. I'll set the radius to 36 and strength to 1.2. Connect the same node setup to the albedo chain. Lastly, let's slightly reduce the bump height for a subtler look. Thanks for watching. If you liked this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share your thoughts in the comments and see you in the next video.